In this video today we will look into the exact reasons as to why Skull Island looked so different in Godzilla vs Kong, what really happened to it and what caused it to be uninhabitable by the timeline of the events of the movie. The information for this has been taken from the movie intro credit scenes, a part of the novelization of Godzilla vs Kong and mainly from the comics GVK Kingdom Kong which is tied into the cinematic universe and is a part of the lore. So before we continue on with the video, do remember to hit that subscribe button to be a part of the MindQ family. So let's get down with this sickness. Originally as it has been for hundreds or maybe even thousands of years, Skull Island located somewhere in the middle of the Pacific Ocean is obscured from view by a relentless, perpetual huge storm that prevents anything other than accidental landings. While it appears to be a tropical paradise at first sight, it is actually home to many plants and animal species that are very harmful to human life. In Godzilla vs Kong, the movie, however, it has been revealed that before the biodome that has Kong inside it was built, the relentless storms that once protected the island's life had gradually begun to overwhelm it, wiping out all the Iwi people as well as the rest of the island's exotic flora and fauna covering the entire land in perpetual darkness and rain. Well, the story starts with us pesky humans as usual. Monarch discovers something very peculiar inside the underground cavities of Skull Island. Brooks, a Monarch scientist, points out that there is a cave miles above a vortex that leads to the Hollow Earth, as shown on a holographic map of Skull Island, which they discovered was sealed in 2012. The Mariana Trench and Antarctica were before this the only known entrances to the Hollow Earth and this one was kept as classified. On Skull Island, a base is built to research the vortex and its impact on the island and there had been quite a lot of research done up to the point where they were testing in order to enter the hollow earth. All that was before the events of King of the Monsters and continued after it and until present during the events of Kingdom Kong. But during KOTM, a superstorm appeared in the Pacific Ocean like nothing on record. It started after Monster Zero left Mexico and went there, with wind speeds of over 400 miles per hour and air pressure that was so dense, it generates new cyclones every 5 minutes, with water spouts reaching the sea floor. The storm had been raging at the same spot for 2 years then suddenly began making its way directly towards Skull Island. Around the same time, Dr. Eileen Andrews had been studying and deciphering some hieroglyphs and discovered near the vortex deep inside the caves which referred to an Iwi legend about a massive storm and a war with the sun. So as he observes the data on the island, Brooks records an audio log, he claims he's missing something because seismic activity was detected on the island for a week since the time he was observing the information, and the storm moved immediately a day after the seismic activity was detected on the island. Brooks believed that the two are intertwined since then, the earthquakes have become more frequent and more stronger and at the same time Monarch intensifies a drilling team inside the cave that was above the vortex to the hollow earth. And Andrews came to know that an ancient legend etched in stone about a king of the deep, something that was the eternal enemy of the sun. As the drilling intensifies deep down in the cave, Monarch begins to assess whether the incoming storm would affect the entrance to the hollow earth. They also wondered if Kong is the one who is unbalancing the island despite the fact that he has always thought to be its protector. Perhaps the island is telling them that it's time to return Kong to his rightful place, and the sooner the better. Uh, after all, Kong had outgrown his surroundings and there is no amount of food that could actually sustain a 356 foot tall titan. After all, Kong can't even hide himself anywhere and it was so easy to locate the titan on the small island. Anyway, back to the story, Kong discovers a cave with paintings of his ancestors and covered in vines. At the same time, Brooks mulls over the phrase of the Iwi mythology as Kong enters the cave. A shadow would cover the earth. He wonders if it's forecasting the storm's arrival and if so, how does that explain the seismic activity? He also wonders whether the king of the deep is an underground titan. He repeats the phrase again. A darkness will swallow the world and the king of the deep will rise and rise and the sun will die in his tongue. Then there was a massive explosion caused by dynamites uh, near the entrance to the vortex and this brought out the enemy of the sun, Titanus Camazots. Then it was realized too late that the king of the deep spoken of in the prophecy was Camazots, 
uh, that the earthquakes were a result of him trying to enter through the hollow earth, and that the storm was what would render the island dark and allow him to return. Camazot's, although powerful, was like a vampire, it cannot stand sunlight. And although Camazot barely lost the fight against Kong and was sent back to the depths, the storm never left and Skull Island was rendered uninhabitable. So the main reason as to why Skull Island was in the condition it was during Godzilla vs Kong was due to the storm caused by Monster Zero merging with a perpetual storm around Skull Island and this was due to Camazot attracting the Pacific storm towards the island. But all this was due to Monarch drilling and trying to reach the Vortex and somehow awaken Camazots and his minions who had been asleep since the events of King of the Monsters when he was called by Ghidorah to Hun. And so with that we come to the end of the video. Do hit that like button for support and slap that subscribe button to be a part of the MindQ family and also smash that notification bell for regular updates. Till the next one, take care fam.